What up, gang? This is Ken Zerk, Ken Zilligan, Zico Milligan, and Villa Villa Trilligan. And we are playing Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. I've never played a Phoenix Wright game before. I've never seen a Phoenix Wright game before. I remember a while ago I wanted to watch Cub Scouts play it. But that was before I went into visual novels and stuff. Like, I don't even think Doki Doki was out yet. You feel me? So I never, I never got, I never, I never had a chance to really look at Phoenix Wright. I never, I never got interested in it. But a lot of people I know like it, and a lot of people I rock with told me to play it. So I'm gonna be playing it. But let's get this going, man. Let's hop into Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Episode one, the first turnabout. I know this requires a lot of thinking and remembering and intelligence, which are not things that I'm very good at. I do know a little bit about it. I know like we, we have to defend this girl who for some reason just sucks at not being convicted of murder cases. I can't get caught. Not like this. I've got to find someone to pin this on. Why you got a hole in it for it? Someone like him. I'll make it look like he did it. August 3rd, 9.47 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Boy, am I nervous. Right. Oh, hiya, Chief. Woo. I'm glad I made it in time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not even one takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. Says a lot about you and your client as well. Yeah, I like that a lot better. It says a lot about you and your client as well. I can see your titties now. Zeke! I'm sorry, I'm recording this the same day I recorded that one Persona 5 episode where I was just really strange and horny for no reason. This is the same day. I still haven't went to sleep. I think I, I took maybe like a like a, a one, two hour nap and now I'm back at it again with the white bands. So actually it's because i owe him a favor a favor you mean you knew the defendant before this case isn't that like illegal or something no 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 it's not it's not i'm tripping i'm tripping i'm tripping that's that's only the jury it's it's only it's only illegal if the jury is familiar with the the, the defendant because then it could be biased when they vote whether or not they're guilty or not it's by it could be biased you mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe him my my owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! My life! Everything! It's all over! Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death! Despair! That's a monster! I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna die! Sounds like he wants to die. Nick! Hey, hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. W what? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I, I'm finished. Finished! I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who, who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, uh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Huh, the person responsible for your girlfriend's death. The newspapers say it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. <laughs> Make sure you add that when you say my name. I will fucking kill you. Here's the story. My first case is a very simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts, my best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually Butts. In the 23 years I've known him, it, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. Let me move my mic a little closer so I can hear my sexy voice.
One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. It's just that's terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he, he's a good guy at heart and that I owe him one, which is why I took the case to clear his name. And that's just what I'm gonna do. Clear that boy name, boy. August 3rd, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number two. I know this guy. He's like really, really, really stupid. Court is now in session for the trial of Lester Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The uh, defense is ready, Your Honor. Ahem. I mean, ahem. Uh, Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Yes, Your Honor. I'm uh, I'm a little nervous. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna cap. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a te we have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Hands shaking, uh, palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy, eyesight fading. A test will consist of a few simple questions, answer them clearly, concisely. Please state the name of this defendant. Larry Butts. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me what's the victim's name. Whew. I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's... Wait. Uh-oh. No. No way. I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Oh, the victim. Of course I know the victim's name. I, uh... I just forgot, temporarily. I, I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press tab at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please, I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? It's Cindy Stone, I think, right? But I'm gonna check anyway. Cindy. Yeah, Cindy Stone. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now tell me what was the cause of death? Blunt force trauma. She was hit with a blunt object. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then... First of question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was the statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. All right. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have during court. Use tab to check the court record frequently. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls defendant Mr. Butts to the stand. Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your stance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Oh, Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Don't be stupid, Larry. Ahem. Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy. We were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. Uh, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or, or seeing me, ever. What's it to you anyway? Mr. Butts, what you'll describe is generally what we mean by <coughs> dumped, okay? In fact, she had completely abandoned you. She was fucking other niggas. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean one of them? Lies, all of it lies, I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. 
According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Huh, indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a lot was a the victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Bunce, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I... My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That cheating she dog? I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused modem is clear to everyone. Yeah, it's quite. Oh boy, this is not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did it, maybe I did it. Don't be fucking stupid, nigga. Uh, he went. What do I do? Answer honestly, bro. I'll send him a signal. Tell the truth. Yeah, I was there, I went. Order! Well, Mr. Butts? Dude, chill. She wasn't home, man, so, like, I didn't see her. Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts was lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who's your witness? The man who found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Order, order in the court, shut up. Mr. Payne, call the prosecute. The prosecution may call its witness. <laughs> yes, your honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Fink side. Mr. Frank saw it, cause Frank saw it. Haha, <laughs> to the stand. Oh, this greasy nigga. Mr. Saw it, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? Oh, yes, newspapers, yes. Mr. Saw it, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Let me check the court record right quick. Okay. Okay. Victim arrived at the home on 7.30, the day before the murder. Thinker is rather heavy. Time of death, 7.31, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Loss of blood due to blood force trauma. All right. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he had left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead! I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found the public phone. Remember the time exact- Dumb nigga, huh? Just a dumb nigga. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was without a doubt the defendant sitting right over there. Huh. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during blackouts? Yes, your honor. 
However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Saw It Saw used, Mr. Saw It Saw, <laughs> Mr. Saw It used was one of those. I have a record of the blackout for you poor usual. Was out from noon. So 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Mr. Wright? Yes, sir. Yes, your honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, your honor. All right, right. This is it. The real deal. What am I supposed to do exactly? Why you exposed the lies in the testimony the witnesses gave? Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key, it's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find the contradiction between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Okay, open the court record with tab and point out contradictions in the testimony. I got it. I already know what the contradiction is. OBJECTION! You found the body at 1 p.m. You sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, you a dumb nigga. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy knows the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. You stupid! There's no- there was nobody to- well, no- body, <laughs> you see what I did there? To find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three hour gap? Oh, uh, that, oh, uh, uh. This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sard, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, uh. Well, I, well, golly gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? Found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Dumbass, the power was off. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been playing go watching a video of a tape program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry for the misunderstanding. Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may begin the cross-examination. Right, you know what to do. I've got this one. <laughs> OBJECTION! Hold it right there! The prosecution said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. I, well, ah. The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Saw it? No, I find it quite puzzling myself, quite. Ah, wait, wait, I remember now. Mr. Saw it, the court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. The constant corrections are harming your credibility. That, and you seem rather distraught. My apologies, Your Honor. And, uh, it must have been shocking to find the body. Very well, Mr. Saw it. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Hold on. D nigga talking out of their neck. No, hold on. He got a coffin on his mouth. 
but I'm pa I'm too paranoid for a threat. I didn't hear at the time I saw it. A table clock in the apartment wasn't there. In the apartment, the there was a table clock in the apartment. Was it there? The murder weapon, the killer used it to hit the victim. Ah, okay. I don't have a way to contradict this, do I? Must have been what I saw. You saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. What do I do here? What is this? Fake. I can see how you'd be a little doubtful. I'm really sorry, I only just remembered that table clock. A table clock? Oh. Okay, so I can question what he's saying. And maybe that can give me more evidence. The murder weapon? Yes, yeah, a table clock that was used as a weapon. That's what I said. Did you doze off in the middle of my testimony or something? Something's fishy here. Why didn't you tell us that in the first place? I guess it just slipped my mind. I'm not really sure how it happened myself. The witness said he saw the table clock in the story. Now find the contradiction. My my question is this, right? How did he see it if it was bashed against a girl's skull? Right here, maybe? Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock, it was a statue. Oh! Oh, snap! It isn't a clock? Now how is this supposed to be a clock? You with your objections and your evidence? Just who do you think you are? Answer the question, Mrs. Saw, before I see your ass to execution center. Hey, I, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, the statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just have to tilt it and it says the time out loud. It doesn't look like a clock. I submitted it as a statue, my apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Have any problems with his testimony now? Okay. How would you have heard the time if you have to press the neck? Your Honor, there's a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Exactly! That's what I'm saying! Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Indeed. The witness knew it was a clock. Because he went into the apartment! You're lying! You are inside the apartment on the day of the murder! Oh yeah, prove it! Prove I went in there! I'll do you better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her! You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That's the sound you heard! Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Saw. The sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. The voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. I don't mean to rhyme. Shut up, nigga. Well, what's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless. Just look at the witness's face. He looks guilty. Would the witness care to elaborate? 
Did you strike the victim with the club? I, I, that, that day, I, I never. Look, I, the clock, I heard no. I mean, I saw, I saw it. Ah! The fuck? Why? Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. I hate you. Bro thinks he's Leon Kuwata. It was him, I tell you. I saw it. He killed her and she should burn, burn. Give him death. Nah, G. Bro sound guilty. Your Honor, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright, Your Honor, you claim the sound of a witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? Whole case is riding on this. I better think it through carefully. Your Honor, the sound Mr. Saw I heard was definitely this clock. The fact which, a fact which is clear to you if you simply Try sounding the clock. Let's sound the clock now here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I asked the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 8425. Oh, I think it's 825. That's certainly a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the, after all. So we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sard heard and the actual time of death. So Mr. Sard, try to talk your way out of this one, bitch. You forgot one thing? Uh-oh, what's he talking about? While it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. He's right. How am I going to prove that? I was so close. Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately, this case ends the cross examine this ends the cross examination of Mr. Frank saw it. I come all the way down here to testify and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal, a criminal. You lawyers are all slime. I almost had him. Sorry, Larry, I failed you. There's nothing I could do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Saw it. Mia, I mean, Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow on the day of the murder. Nobody could prove that. Um, well, yes. That doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking outside the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock slow? The power outage! Maybe? I don't know. Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right? Right? <laughs> You're not funny, bro. Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Okay, let's see. Let's go over the facts. Maybe she took the clock with her to Paris. And because Paris is probably, I, look, I don't know, but I'm assuming Paris is three hours slow itself. Like the time is three hours behind and I don't mean to rhyme, but maybe Paris is three hours behind. So she so when she took, she took the thinker with her and she made the thinker be three hours behind. Like she adjusted the time to be three hours behind, but that's ultimately what led to her demise, right? So that didn't lead to her demise. But I'm just rhyming words now. But because she adjusted the clock three hours backwards, when she got back home, 
she forgot to adjust it properly back to the proper time. So that's why I was two hours behind. If y'all picking up what I'm putting down, that barely did, that barely rhymed. Yes! Wait! Maybe I can prove it! You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let him have it! Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There's a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Tough work! Let's hear you- Let's see how you see you pull this one off! Take that! Take that! The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the difference be the difference between here and Paris is nine hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow. It was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why you heard. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in the apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Saw It, or should I say, Mr. Did It? Bros the Diddler! Oh shit. Bro died. Order, order I say! Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness? Yeah. He was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly and find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. And with that, this court has been adjourned. Turns out Frank Saad was a common burglar. He posted the newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house that day. When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Saad let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Saad grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. Woo! I can't believe we won. Right! Good job in there. Congratulations. Thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen a chief looking this happy. If she's glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over! Larry! Supposed to be happy! What's wrong now? Nick! Don't worry about me, I'll be dead and gone soon! Good! Wait, no! I mean, bad! 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 Larry, you're innocent! The case is closed! But... But my Cindy Wendy's gone, man! Gone forever! Larry, she was... Ah, oh, never mind. She was a whore! Congratulations, Harry Butts! Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headline now. Harry Butts Innocent. <laughs> Thanks, I really owe you one. I won't forget this ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner? Movie? My treat. Oh, no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, but hey, here, take this, it's a present. The murder weapon? A present for me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Really, you made this? Well, thank you, I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick, can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And she, and she was playing, just playing before a fool. Don't that make you want to cry? Larry. Are you so sure? Excuse me? 
I think she thought a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me, okay? Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Uh, oh yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? Check it out. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. What about the clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. Whatever, she probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things can change depending on how you look at them. People too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right, listen, learn, grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in, never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. How about dinner on me? We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Speaking of Harry, you were the one saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Yeah, part at least. You have to tell me more about it sometime, maybe over drinks? And so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, her, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure it's not gonna pay us unless you count the clock he gave Mia. I didn't know it then, but that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. No! Is the chief gonna die? All right, there we go. That's the end of the episode, guys. If y'all enjoyed, like, subscribe, leave a comment, and read a mod type into the next one. It's my first time ever playing an Ace Attorney game, ever seeing an Ace Attorney game, actually. So, you know, I really don't know. I really don't know what I'm getting into. But you know, this little prologue was fun. I enjoyed it. So, I hope y'all enjoy. I hope y'all enjoy this series. You feel me? Uh, tap. Ugh. Oh.